So, uh, just showing you, wanted to show you guys some unique applications of the fence sensor. Uh, remember, we want to keep our minds on flexibility and uh, versatility. Uh, we've got our armor cable for the uh, our razor coil. You can actually install it on razor coil, calibrate to that coil. The razors can slice and dice that outer jacket all day long. But we've got these stainless steel strands that protect the actual, actual sensor cable. It doesn't damage the sensor. So you can pass that around. Um, here we've got a pipeline. Well, we weren't trying to protect the pipeline. We were trying to detect uh, intrusions on the insulation on the casing outside of it. So we installed the sensor cable on this casing here. And uh, we did a grinder, uh, a drill, and uh, a, a hacksaw test on there. We're able to detect all of that with the same kind of location accuracy. Some more unique applications here. Of course, you know, weather isn't a concern. Um, near trains. If you just install the Micropoint system near a train track, you're going to have alarms. Absolutely, just like you would with anything else. You have to know that you need to tune that system. So if you install it somewhere that's noisy, high winds, and maybe in an alleyway, something like that, near a train track, we install it, we calibrate it, we watch it, we go back and tune it. So all that kind of comes together with uh, all of the capabilities of the systems. We have a, a train about 30 trains a day go by at our test site, about 600 feet of fence, chain link, with our system on there. And I, I periodically am out there and check it. And, I, and one time in a three month period, we had one alarm out there. So I went out there and kicked the fence, make sure it's still working. And sure enough, got the alarm working the whole time. But that's tuned correctly. Uh, so if you watch any of our videos or training videos online, you'll actually see a train come into view on that picture. You'll see the exact location I'm talking about. You got a question? Yeah, I'm just wondering, does it drip? Does it require maintenance to continually sit there and keep it tuned? No. Uh, because we're looking at each meter, we're looking at meter by meter or 1.1 meter increments, uh, it doesn't matter if the fence expands or contracts over time. Because even if we have a tenth of an inch expansion over the course of a fence panel, that's divided by three. That's still, you know, divided to a very narrow area. And so one of the things that we look at with very older or older style systems is the cable is your zone. And that tenth of an inch per panel across a 100 meter zone means the fence has changed dramatically from its original calibration. So by looking at the small increments, by looking at the cells individually, the maintenance is virtually nil on these systems. Um, if you start having an increase in nuisance alarms, then we would go back and look at and see, you know, maybe something's changed or you know, maybe it might be time to do a calibration. Uh, but we don't see that happen at all within the first five to six years. Or the technology works. So when, the, when you see the trains go by, I think, what is it, vibrations? Is, it, is that what it is? Yeah, vibrations uh, coming through the ground. Um, a lot of times uh, we have these at uh, shipping terminals, and they have shunting yards nearby. A shunting yard is where they build trains, where they take uh, train cars and attach them together. They move, move those over, and they attach more train cars to it. And every time they back up a train, all the cars compress by about half an inch. And it goes boom, 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 boom. You can stand on the ground like this, feeling the ground shake when they're doing that. And they stop and all the cars expand a little bit. Boom, boom, boom. And you can watch the fence kind of shake along there. Um, generally, it's that vibration transmitted through and metal on metal contact that's generating those, those, those issues.